Thank you very much, firstly, to Mike and to the committee for organising today. We really appreciate the opportunity to be able to address all of you on issues that are important to you and are important to all of us. And can I also thank, before I start, can I also thank Mike and the Wagstaff community for the way in which you have supported each other through some of the most challenging times that we have faced over the last couple of years. We have heard of your work um, even in the years before that and I just want to thank you for the work that you have been doing to build a very strong local community here. It's often been said that we live in the best region, in the best country in the world and it's absolutely true. It's also been said that Australia is a lucky country. But I'm not so sure whether it's luck or hard work that has made Australia into this great nation that we are today. I look around and I think of the Australians who have given their blood, sweat, tears and sacrifice to help build this nation into the great nation we are today with the freedom that we enjoy in this country. And to those of you who have served our nation in peacetime and wartime as veterans, I thank you. To our senior Australians, those who have spent the past decades giving us the opportunities that we have today and that we enjoy today, I also want to say thank you to you as well. It's because of you that we stand in the, in the way that we have, that we stand um, the way that we are today because of what you have done and given to us. So thank you very much. You know, three years ago, when I asked for your support in the 2019 election, I don't know that any of us knew what that would mean. I don't know that we knew that we would face some of the greatest challenge our nation has seen, certainly in my lifetime. We faced drought, bushfires, floods, just as we were getting over the floods, we had the COVID-19 pandemic. We saw businesses forced to close or stand down, supported by JobKeeper to make sure we could get through to the other side of the pandemic. We saw plague. We saw um, lockdowns. We had, um, we, we saw lockdowns. We saw, I'm just trying to think of all the different things because so many things happened in such a short space of time. We had, we had plague, do you remember the mice plague as well? We had Delta, we had Omicron, and then of course we're facing war in Europe. None of us actually knew that that's what we would face when we asked for your support in 2019. But thanks to the leadership of Prime Minister Scott Morrison and the coalition government, Australia has come through some of these challenging crises that we have faced, with one of the highest vaccination rates in the world, one of the lowest mortality rates in the world, and a strong economy that will deliver a stronger future for all of us. When we faced the COVID-19 pandemic, the Treasury modelling showed that we could face unemployment rates of up to 15%, which would have been catastrophic in a region like the Central Coast that already has had an historic challenge with youth unemployment. Instead, today, we stand with record unemployment rates of 4%. 4%. Youth unemployment in our nation is at 8.8%, 10% here on the Central Coast. When I think back a little further to when I first stood and asked for your support as your Liberal candidate for Robertson in 2013. I think what of, of what we have delivered that wasn't actually there in 2013. Let me just go through some things. North Connects, doubling of funding to Gosford Hospital through the, through the federal government. Over $100 million into better local roads. Sporting upgrades right around the central coast. NBN delivered and in fact, as we speak, there is an upgrade going into King Cumber and Erina of up to a, a one gigabit per second upgrade, which will be completed to 75% of homes around Australia by the end of next year. Jobs on the Central Coast, including the ATO in, in Gosford, health on the streets, a groundbreaking initiative that none of us knew we would need the way that we did when we first funded it through the COVID-19 pandemic. 
a world-class medical research institute and medical university, opened last year. And now, an expansion of that happening even as we speak on the grounds of the old uh, Mitre 10 hospital site in partnership with the university and the New South Wales government, delivering young people even more opportunities to be able to study and work where they live. And of course, in the middle of all that, we stopped PEP 11, not with an idea or a thought bubble, but by following the correct and the proper process to ensure that once it was stopped, it could not be unstopped. There is a lot more work that we need to do. But by following our plan for the Central Coast, our plan for Australia, I am absolutely convinced that we will continue to deliver the opportunities, the aspirations, the hopes the people here on the Central Coast speak to me every single day about. In closing, I might just ask you, why do we talk so much about the importance of a strong economy? I'll give you one word, and it's potholes. It's potholes. Think back to what has happened as a result of, as a result of some of the great challenges that a Labor, Greens, Independent, Aligned Council delivered thanks to bad economic management. And now what we are looking at, what we are looking at, what we are looking at is, what we are looking at, well, I'm just, what we are looking at is some of the very great challenges that we face as a result of not having not having finances in good and proper order. Now, yes, of course, the rains have contributed, but we need to make sure that Australia is able to deal with any challenging headwinds that may face our nation, despite what may come at us. And we can do that best by securing a strong economy to deliver a stronger future for all of us, including here on the Central Coast. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to ask a question of the current member for Robertson. In June 2018, a motion was put to the Liberal Party Federal Council, the highest policy making body within the Liberal Party, to privatise the ABC. Now, not one person spoke against that motion, and it was carried overwhelmingly on a ratio of about two to one. I'd like to ask you, are you in lockstep with your party regarding privatising the ABC, one of our most valuable resources, or would you be prepared to cross the floor and, and work against any move to privatise it, as your colleague Trent Zimmerman has promised me personally? Thank you very much for the question. Firstly, I will say I'm in lockstep it's lock, step and barrel, I, th I think were the words you used, with our coalition party room, and there's no plans to privatise the ABC. I support the ABC. I support fully funding the ABC. I certainly support the $3.3 billion that was put into the budget for the, for the next three years for the ABC. The ABC is an incredibly important institution in Australia. When I was working for Telstra, and having to deal with a lot of uh, natural disasters that, of course, with an infrastructure company you deal with. It was the ABC that we went to time and time again to make sure that important information got out. When I look at a local regional area like the Central Coast, it is the ABC that constantly provides the relevant local news and local perspectives that our community comes to rely on. When I was, uh, when I, my kids were younger, it was the ABC that my kids were watching. And yes, if you want to know my favourite program on the ABC, and I'm sorry I can't go by this, it's Rake. I support the ABC, I'll continue to support the ABC. The Liberal Party, uh, the Liberal Party has a proud tradition of having party policies. Uh, our government um, is elected to govern on the commitments we make to the Australian people. That is what we have done and we will continue to do. And you would cross the floor? There's no need to cross the floor. It's not, it's not coalition well, no, party policy. No, uh, next, next I, I think I've answered your question. Sorry, thank you. Hello, Ms. Wicks. Uh, Dr. Barbara Holt, um, I was the next, or well, going to run for this federal election, but I called out because of money. Dimension laws. Um, I have a PhD in corruption regulation in law. Um, I'm also an ex-prosecutor. Uh, you mentioned that Scott Morrison, Mr. Morrison, has shown strong leadership in relation to the last three years. He also promised a federal ICAC. 
you've offered some, not legislation, you've offered some, um, a discussion point. In that discussion point, um, the Liberal Party seems to have said that law enforcement officers are more corrupt than politicians. Um, your version of the RCAC has been called a sham by many jurists. I think Tony Wheeling um, is another one, is one who has said that. Why is your uh, ICAC, ACA, NIC, CIC, whatever you want to call it, a weak version of one that is desperately needed? Why won't you commit to Dr Haynes's legislation, which is awesome? It's been done with with uh, Griffith University, it's done with Transparency International, all the leading minds of Australia and international transparency, corruption, all those kind of people have written some fantastic legislation with code of conduct legislated. Um, why won't you support that? Thank you very much for an important question. Firstly, I think it's very important to acknowledge the principles of accountability and transparency and integrity in politics, and that's certainly something that I seek to uphold each and every day. I was actually the chair of the Public Accounts and Audit Committee, and one of my roles as the chair of the Public Accounts and Audit Committee was to look into the work of one of our many integrity agencies that we already have in Australia, there's around a dozen, including oh, yes, the important work of the Auditor General and the Australian National Audit Office. And in fact, uh, through my chairmanship, we advocated for and secured record funding to the Auditor General, the ANAO, and also we, 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 um, we delivered a report um, that was bipartisan, a bipartisan report uh, on a review of the Auditor General Act and made a number of recommendations in relation to enhancing the continued independence of the Auditor General. So I do want to say firstly that I do support the work of the integrity agencies in Australia, particularly the important work of the Auditor General and I very, very, very much support that, that important institution. Uh, in relation to a Commonwealth Integrity Commission, we have 300 pages of legislation. We took that to the election. That is our policy. Labor unfortunately have so not supported that. The, we have taken this number to. One or number two? Well, Tan Tanya, I'd like to finish my answer. If, sorry, Vanya, I'd like to finish my answer if that's okay. We have taken that to the election. Uh, it remains our policy. It is unfortunate that it is not supported by Labor, but it is our policy for a Commonwealth Integrity Commission. It is one that I support alongside all of the other integrity agencies in our nation. The question was. If other politicians or jurists, retired judges, etc., have called your model a sham that politicians can hide behind, why are you not looking for legislation that shows that you're really supporting accountability, transparency, and all this kind of stuff? Responsible government, etc. That's how you you build up trust with the community. You have transparency, you have accountability, integrity, and we haven't seen that. An integrity commission would show that you really do support integrity. Uh, and that's why, and that is why we have 300 pages of legislation for the Commonwealth Integrity Commission. Can I also say? Can I? Can I also say? Can I also say? Well, you may not like my answer, but I am answering the question. Um, can I also say, the work of the Auditor General is incredibly important, and you'll actually find it's an iterative process where departments or where the government will actually accept recommendations, and do you do see? continued improvements in transparency and accountability in relation to the work of the Auditor General. I disagree, but I'll send you some links. Thank you. Thanks, Vanya.